Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into the very first dedicated DaVinci Resolve tutorial today. Now I'm using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and if you didn't know, you can go over to Blackmagic's website, and you can download DaVinci Resolve 14, which is what we're using today. You can get it for free. Uh, there are some features that you can't use, but there's an awful lot that you can use. And today we're going to talk about five steps to color grading. Kind of some things that I like to think about when I'm color grading, and maybe you should start thinking about when you're color grading as well. Maybe it'll help you color grade a little bit better. Maybe not. Either way, subscribe to this channel so you never miss any video editing, tutorials, past, present, or future. Uh, let's jump into DaVinci right now and check this thing out. Alrighty, here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and uh, like I mentioned, this is still the free version of it, but there's an awful lot you can do with the free version. And I've thrown a few clips here onto my timeline. I think I'm going to begin with this clip here. It's just a clip where it's sort of out of focus, and it fades to in focus. A guy on a moped comes riding by, and, and all of that. We can do some color correction and grading to this clip, and I can walk you through my process a little bit. My first tip in terms of color grading here in DaVinci would be establish a workflow that works for you. Generally speaking, the way I attack a new piece of footage is I try to correct the exposure. This might be a little bit dark, right? Uh, then I try to establish the contrast. Does it need a little contrast? Not. Sometimes the contrast is fixed just by fixing the exposure. I go ahead and correct the color. This is not necessarily doing the creative color grading stuff. This is trying to find a baseline where it's like, okay, this is kind of what the footage looked like. Then I'll go ahead and adjust saturation if need be. A lot of times, especially if you're shooting in log, you're going to have to adjust your saturation. So if we have to do that, we'll do that. And then the last step would be applying color effects, a custom grade. If I'm matching colors to another scene in the film that I'm shooting, or maybe matching colors to a major motion picture, whatever it is, or importing or using an existing LUT. All of that I like to do at the end. Now, typically, I would use multiple what are called nodes when I'm doing this type of editing, but I think to keep the tutorial simple today, we're just going to do everything and lump it all onto one node, which is not ideal, uh, but we'll find a way to make it work for us today. Now, the second tip that I want to go over is use your scopes. So I'm going to pop out the scopes. By the way, if you don't see the scopes, you can right-click and just choose Show Scopes. You'll right-click on your footage here, Show Scopes, and we'll pop the scopes out, and you're going to see, well, now I've got the four up happening. Before, it was just the single when it was down there in its little, in its little nesting spot. Um, with four up, we have a few different kinds of scopes. We have the RGB Parade, we have a waveform, we have the, our traditional histogram, and we have a vector scope. The two that I'm really kind of most in tune with here are the vector scope and the waveform. Form. They're the two that I find most useful. Uh, so let's take a look at them. I'm going to go one up here and I'm going to go waveform. Let's talk about the waveform. I'm going to choose a different shot here. The cool thing about the waveform is it is a visual representation of what's going on in your photo. For instance, it reads left to right exactly as your picture is. So right here we can see I'm overlaying this image here over my waveform. And we can see how all the buildings are lining up with these peaks. And yeah, there's a lot of blue. See that blue line that's pushed up? And it's saying that you've got a lot of blue in this image, a lot of blue in the highlights. And sure enough, yeah, up here in this top part of the, the image, the, this, this shot, there's a lot of blue. The fact that reds are depressed in the foreground should indicate to us that, well, because cyan is the opposite of red, there's probably a heavy cyan cast in the foreground. And sure enough, we look at the image, and there is a, a heavy cyan cast there as well. So there's a lot of information you can get from your waveform. And if we do something like, I'm just going to come over here randomly and push the greens up, you're going to see that our green line is moving up while the blues are moving down. Then if I come into the gain, which kind of targets the highlights more, and I pull this way over to push the blues down, just watch the blues plummet. Right? So you can push them way down. Now it destroys the image, so I don't like that. I'm going to undo everything that I just did. But the point is, the waveform is a really, really powerful tool. Now the second thing I want to talk about is the vector scope here. Now the vector scope, as you can see here, I've got another overlay. This is just an indication of color. So it's going to tell you what type of color and how saturated that color is. And just like with the color wheel, up here we've got our reds, and these boxes kind of indicate, and they've got the little letter next to them. This would be magenta, we got blue, we've got cyan, green, and yellow. And then this little white scuzzy bit in the middle, kind of the, the farther it's shooting in any given direction, it's indicating how saturated that particular color is. Again, let me give you an example. If I go to my gamma, and I push a ton of green into this image, Image, you can see that there's a noticeable shift of this whole thing down toward the green. Now remember, a lot of our blue is contained in the highlights. So if I come to the gain, which is targeting the highlights, and I say, you know what, you let's get some of the green out of there, or some of the blue out of there and swing green into there. Look at how drastically we affect this vector scope. We can read this vector scope and say, all right, in whatever the shot is, I wouldn't even need to look at the, the crazy green Mountain Dew-esque shot we have. But just by looking at the vector scope, I should be able to tell you there's a lot of green in this shot and it's very saturated. 
So the vector scope can be extraordinarily important and useful, especially when you're matching color or just checking to see why is why does the shot seem off? Is there a color cast? Is something crazy going on? I'm just going to come up here and reset my uh, UI layout here, and you can select this little icon to bring up your scopes once again. Now, the last one that I'll just touch on for a second here is the RGB parade, and that's just fairly self-explanatory. Again, if I go back to this shot of the city, we can basically just see, yeah, there's a ton more blue in this shot than green or red, and as I push colors around, these will move around. I'm going to go and live with the waveform for right now, and like I said, we're going to work on correcting this shot or doing just messing around with this shot a little bit. So let's add a node. We're going to add what's called a serial node. We can come up here to nodes and choose add serial node. The hotkeys are, are really useful here. The option S, this would be Alt S on Windows, and also the disable current node. I use that a lot as well. Command or Control D. That just allows you to sort of, you know, take away what you just did temporarily. So we're going to add a serial node, and you can see there it is. A, an interesting way or a good way to think about your serial nodes is like adjustment layers in Photoshop. You can apply all kinds of color effects to a particular node, and you can add a second node, option S, and apply a bunch more effects to to this particular node and then uh, add another node apply a bunch of different effects to that and then anytime you can double click a node here and then just command or control D you can just uh, temporarily disable it and see what's going on I'm just gonna right click and delete these two nodes because we don't need them we're just gonna work on a single node as I said before so we're gonna work here on node number one I'm gonna right click and choose change label and well, let me choose change label again and we're just gonna call this uh, correct or something I don't know we can choose anything and I'm going to use my color wheels down here. Now, I'm working with the primary color wheels. There are primary bars and log wheels as well. Uh, but to keep things simple, we're just going to work with primary wheels. The lift, this is generally your shadows. Gamma is kind of your midtones, And gain is going to be the brighter areas of your image. Now, the pucks, these colored, the colored rings here, uh, they, they're going to allow you to push and pull color in and out of different areas of your shot. But down here, these horizontal sliders, these, you can just hover over them and use your mouse wheel to go up or down. And what they're going to do is adjust uh, the brightness. So you can see here I'm pushing or pulling brightness into the shadows of my image and I can watch over here on my scope to just make sure that I'm I'm not pushing it. See if I make it too dark, whoops, if I make it too dark you can see we're clipping a ton of data and sure enough look at our video. We've got all this solid black. That's really really bad. Now you can also just click and you can get a much finer control on this. So I'm going to push this down a little bit. Just make my darks a little bit darker. It's going to you know, help push it a little bit closer to the zero. It doesn't have to be exactly on zero. We don't want it to be solid black. But this is going to help us infuse some contrast. Uh, here with the gain, let's actually pull some of that back. You can see we're, we were clipping a little bit just because we got all these you know, very bright twinkle lights. And then here with the gamma, I think we're going to push a bunch of light into the midtones. So we're going to attempt to kind of spread this out a little bit. And then I might just go and try to make the shadows a little bit darker. Again, that's going to help infuse the contrast I talked about before. So now with this node, we can look at a quick before and after. Just Command or Control D. There's before, there's after. So we're beginning the work. Maybe I should move to an area where we've got things a little bit more in focus. This, by the way, is a shot. Uh, I was in Philadelphia for the NFL draft, so a lot of a lot of green jerseys walking around there in the city of brotherly love. Now, another place that we can adjust exposure or contrast is here in our curves. you got your curves icon right here. And this works like a, a typical curve you'd expect in something like Photoshop or Lightroom, if you're familiar with that, or even the curves in Lumetri Color and Premiere. Uh, we can pull our black point up to just boost some light into those shadows. I don't think I need to mess with that. I think I got all of my exposure corrected over here with my color wheels. But just know you have your curves and a bunch of different varieties of curve that you can do a lot of different stuff with. We'll talk about some of that in a minute. Uh, but we, I think we got our exposure correct over here in our color wheel section. So let's move along now and talk about the fourth thing, the fourth tip for color grading and correction here in DaVinci Resolve, and that's color correction. Uh, we've got a bunch of options down here on this bottom bar, temperature, tint, uh, mid-tone detail, color boost, and shadows, highlights. I typically live and mess with the temperature and tint settings, but if you have a point in your photo that should be white, like probably the 92 on his jersey, that should be a neutral color, right? It's, it's, I'm sure it's a white on the jersey. So I can select this little, this little eyedropper icon down here and I can just click right here on his jersey and this is going to help correct that color a bit. You can see the color almost looks like we messed it up a little bit, but it, now if we undo and redo very quickly, it's like, whoa, we did, we kind of did need to do that, didn't we? Now, if we do need to adjust the temperature and tint, you can just punch in or just click on the word temperature and click and drag. I'm going to leave it at 4,000. And the same with tint. Temperature is your blues and orange sliding back and forth. Tint is your magenta and green. Now we can click on the number one here and we have some additional contrast pivot and this here saturation. So we can reduce saturation a little bit or boost saturation. Maybe we'll boost it a little bit here, get some color rocking in there for us. I'm not going to mess with the Hue or the Luma Mix. I'm going to leave them at their default settings. 
in addition to the color uh, the color temperature adjustments here, we also have our R, G, and B channels here for our curve. So if we're looking at this and saying, you know what, there's just too much cyan in the shadows, I can click down here and reduce the reds, or I'm sorry, increase the reds in the shadows, which will help just kind of cancel out some of that cyan. And then if we add too much red to the highlight areas, we can just say, you know what, all right, rein that red back in. Make sure we still get a nice cyan wash rather than red up in the brighter areas of, uh, of our shot. Now, this will be an area where it'd be nice to have this on a separate node so we could very quickly just preview it um, but I'm not going to go back and forth undoing a bunch of stuff and then we come over to blues maybe and we could say you know what go for that classic push a little blues into the shadows pull a little bit of yellow orange into the highlights I really don't like that for the shot I'm going to hit command or control z twice to undo that I think I'm going to leave this where I have it I like the way it is um, I'm pretty satisfied I'm going to hit command or control d there's before and there's after um, to this point now, one thing that did happen was when we added all of that global saturation over here by sliding saturation up to 60, I think we saturated the trees a little bit too much. There's just a really thick, heavy, like almost sticky green feeling. So we're going to come over here, and this is hue versus hue. We don't want that. Hue versus saturation is what we want. So what we can do is say, look, if the hue is a certain color, desaturate that color. So I'm going to add a couple points to kind of like cordon off my greens. And now if I pull up within here, the greens get greener. Or if I pull down, the greens, we take away some of the, uh, some of the saturation there. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit to try to get to those, uh, to try to get to those tree colors. And if I just undo this a couple times here, probably the faster way would just be you can just hit green and it'll apply all the points for you. And you can pull down, you can pull up, do whatever you like that way. So I'll just leave this down here nice and desaturated or just a little less saturated. And honestly, maybe the yellows are a little bit too saturated. So I'll just slide this over and we'll allow our reds and yellows also to get desaturated a little bit. There we go. I think that's kind of controlling the scene a little bit more as I like. I want to make sure that I don't desaturate too much of these green cyans, though, because that's kind of that midnight green that they use in those uh, Philadelphia football jerseys. So I'm, I, I like the way that looks. I'm going to leave that there. So there's before, there's after. We're definitely cleaning this thing up a little bit. Okay, and finally, for the fifth tip in terms of color grading uh, is all of the sort of creative stuff that you would want to do to your shot. So do you want to add a LUT to it? You can right-click on your node. Again, this is another area where it's probably a good idea to add a node, but sticking with what we're, what my initial idea was, I'm not going to do that. So I right-click on this node, go 3D LUT. We can come down here to, like, film looks, and you've got some cool looks down here. The Kodak 2383s are pretty cool. We'll go with, like, the D55 maybe. You can see, whoa, that's extreme. This is also why it's a good idea to add another LUT. We're just going to add another LUT. I'm going to break the rule. Option and the letter S, that'll be Alt S for the PC. And we're going to add that 3D LUT to this new node. So we're going to go Film Looks again. I'll just choose, I don't know, I'll, I'll go with the same Kodak right there. And you can see it's super duper dark. Um, so maybe I can come back to our correction uh, node. And normally I would probably have a node specifically for brightness. And we can just go ahead and boost the black point here in our curves and lift this thing up, make the whole thing a bit brighter. Maybe I'll actually pull some of the black point back. You can see we've really changed the way the color is working here in this node. Uh, and if I double click on our LUT, I can disable it and you can see it's a very low contrast shot. And then we add the LUT and it just does all this to it. Whether or not that's, you know, that's an upgrade, I guess that is, that is probably debatable. Um, but let me undo that. Uh, just know that you can add LUTs. There's a whole bunch of free LUTs here in uh, DaVinci Resolve. But if you don't want to add one of the LUTs, you can always just do your own custom color grading. You could look at this and maybe we could go to the parade and say, all right, well, maybe we could throw some red into the higher ends here. So we come up to gain if we're just looking to push some red into it or just go totally creative and say, you know what, I just want to flood some blue into the foreground. And I'm not saying this looks good. Flood some blue into the foreground, foreground go with some yellow in the, the uh, highlights. And then maybe the gamma here, what looks good? We can just kind of wiggle around until we get something that looks all right. Uh, maybe a little bit of a blue haze, something like that. And if you mess up any of these color wheels, you can hit the little reset button, and it's just going to reset that for you. I'm going to push a little bit more yellow and kind of yellowish greenishness into the highlights there. And you can see, just like that, we kind of perform our own little grade. You can also, of course, use curves, push and pull color around with curves as well. There's really no wrong way to do it. Just kind of figure out what works well for you. Now, one thing is, when you have a look that you really like, maybe you want to save it. Well, you could export it as a LUT, or you can save it here as these stills within DaVinci. So you can just right-click here on your monitor and choose Grab Still, and you can see, there we go, we just threw that out there. I can right-click and choose Change Label, and I can name this whatever, just Nighttime or something. And there we go, we have that. And then we could come to another shot, like this shot here of City Hall. We could right-click on this still, and we could just choose Apply Grade. And there we go, we've applied it. Now it looks radically different because the, the exposure of the shot is totally different. 
But if we use like magenta sunset here and apply it to this shot of City Hall, we can go apply grade, and you can see it totally changes. We add all these different nodes. We've got something going on here. I'm going to undo that though because I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to this clip where we've done this work so far. And let's say we, we like this so much that it's like this is the new LUT that I'm using. I, I want to use it in Premiere. I want to use it in Photoshop. I want to use it here in DaVinci. Well, we can right click on this clip and we can choose Generate 3D LUT. I usually go with the dot cubes. So I'm going to do this. And then I can just choose to save it wherever on my desktop. And I, I'm just going to call this Temp LUT. And if I just save it, temp for temporary, obviously. There we go. We've exported that LUT. So between the built-in LUTs that you have here uh, in DaVinci Resolve, a lot of great stuff. Uh, between the stuff you have here, between LUTs that you can import, you can create your own LUTs and save them out, or just create a nice collection of these stills that you really like, there's a whole lot of different ways to take advantage of some of the creative color grading techniques and tools that are available to us here in DaVinci Resolve. And we really are just scraping the tip of the iceberg. There's so much you can do here in DaVinci Resolve. But I think here for this tutorial, five tips on color grading and some of the things I look for when it comes to color grading in DaVinci Resolve, that'll be about it. And that is going to pretty much wrap it up for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. I'm not a professional colorist, but I do enjoy tinkering with a little color in DaVinci. And uh, it's just one of those applications that you don't realize how powerful it is until you get in and you really start using it. And also, use high-quality footage when you're using DaVinci Resolve. And it's like another whole level of, whoa, this is incredible what this application can do. So again, if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If not, for color grading and color wheels, pucks as they call them here, color temperature, nodes, and all the different stuff we covered today in DaVinci Resolve. Resolve. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.